ready? I don't know, are you? <clears throat> I'm ready. Are you? My cookie's gone. All right, belly up to the mic. Welcome to Tech Connect, your opportunity to ask questions and for the technology department of Coloma Community Schools to explore topics that are of interest to teachers, staff, and anyone else interested in educational technology. Uh, we're going to go around. I am Ben Rimes. I am the technology director here for the district and to my left. I am Tanya Kimberly, and I'm the district uh, technology specialist. And, and power school guru. Yeah, whatever they throw at me. <laughs> uh, I am Matt Kennedy. I'm the IT technician, support technician uh, for Coloma Community Schools. That's right. That is a new voice, a new yes. voice in that role. Um, but not a new voice to the district. No, a familiar I've, one. I've returned. You, <laughs> you've returned. Why did you leave us, Matt? Uh, I went to go off to college, and I'm still in college. But the opportunity has arri arri arrived for me to come back and uh, join the district and catch back up with the community. Cool. Awesome. Hi, my name is your name, and I am your age, year old, your occupation or student status from your location. In my free time, I enjoy your hobbies or interests, as well as other activities or interests. So, I'm Dan. We're talking ChatGPT today, so I asked ChatGPT <laughs> to write my introduction, and it doesn't know who I am, but I am your director of curriculum and uh, instructional technology person and state and federal programs person and whatever else they throw at me, like Tanya person. So, what webmaster a, is an official title I think I've added for myself. What a fantastic... You, you, yes, you have added that for yourself. That's yes. been very clear. Yeah. Yes. Um, that was a what, a... what a what a creative and unique intro that you had there. It's... <laughs> I, I'm known to be creative and unique. I'm one of a kind. <laughs> yeah. Some people have said it. Just like all the my other mom, AIs My mom has said it before. I'm one of a kind. <laughs> Also really good at pushing buttons. If so. your mom hasn't said that you are special and unique, then, you know, um, yeah, well, I, I don't know what to say about that. An original always tomorrow. Here. Yeah, yeah, always yeah tomorrow. good luck. Mother's Chat, approval Chat tomorrow. GPT can't, can't, can't touch me. Got nothing on me. All right. So uh, let's go around real quick before we get into Chat GPT because it's a big topic. Uh, let's, just, let's just share what we're up to. Um, uh, currently, I've got, like, lots of projects up in the air. Uh, we went ahead and... Uh, uh, secured a bid approved by the school board for secure door access. So putting in new um, new locks with uh, with that people will be able to get in and out with key fobs or their phone or all sorts of different ways, or we'll be able to remotely control them, open and close, all sorts of cool new features to have better secure the district. Um, also working on new radios for each of the buildings. Also waiting on an upgrade to all of our wireless. And uh, password change, password change. Dun, Although dun, by the time dun. you listen to this, yeah, we may already be in the thick of it. So that's that's what I've been working on. It's pretty you. simple. You just add an exclamation point. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell them, Dan. I have been working pretty diligently on my goal of making it into every classroom K-5. I am currently finishing up in the kindergarten with coding and uh, look forward to visiting the fourth grade in the next coming weeks. I, uh, I've been spending a lot of my time since I've gotten back uh, getting re-familiarized with a lot of the new staff uh, that has been here. Uh, additionally, so you'll see me out around some of the districts, uh, meeting new staff, seeing how some of the rooms are set up. And I, in between that, I'm usually doing repairs or answering tickets. Uh, so you'll see me running between the different buildings to fix your Chromebook, to set up your new printer, to fix a sound issue with your projector. You, I kind of race around all over throughout the day and keeps me pretty busy. Yeah, Matt's, Matt's only been here for, for three weeks now. This is the end of week three. Mm -hmm. First week was training with, with Mike. Yep. Um, and uh, the last two weeks on your own, and he's been kicking butt. Um, you've been kicking butt with... Uh, 
with everything, mm-hmm. um, especially last week when when uh, I think there was a day when when Dan and Tanya and myself were all out of the district for conferences, and yep. it was just you. Yeah, the weight of the technology department on your back, and you you killed it. Everything's been running pretty smooth. I'm like I've said before. I'm I'm very happy to be back, and it's I love working with you guys. Nice. We love you too, Aww. man. <laughs> All right, what's up, Dan? Been asking Chat GPT to do my work for me, um, but no, really, like I, I am at the pro- point of the school year where I'm starting to look ahead for next, and I sent an email yesterday with um, back to school as the subject line, and I beat Walmart, Target, Amazon, Meyer, <laughs> everybody with their back to school sales because I've already brought it up for a couple people for talking about stuff that's going to happen in August and next school year. So. Gosh, dang um, it! Yeah, no, it's 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 kind of like no no rest for the the weary here. Um, which again, that's but, like welcome to like K twelve in general, where yeah. we can't ever talk about what's happening right now. It's like it's either we're talking about what happened or what's going to happen in the next six to eight yeah. months. Yeah, mm-hmm. there's no. It's it's yeah. So. <laughs> that's but, not a dig. It's just all, all we're my, very, very all busy. My, all the grants for this school year are, are set and starting to starting to plan for next school year. An interesting email about some options that one building wants to explore. Cool. Um, so kind of going from there, but also looking ahead to next next fall already, which nice. is scary. Sad. No, 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 no. Sad. Hey, it's, it's always great to look towards so. the future. Okay, so we mentioned Dan had the very colorful introduction with the chat GPT. Um, we're going to talk about it, but before we do, I think it's important that everyone understands what it is. So there is a, um, there's a subreddit. Um, for those of you who don't know, Reddit is this kind of like website that just has everything, forums for everything. And there's a subreddit called Explain Like I'm Five. It's not meant to to uh, put down anyone's uh, intellect or anything. The idea of that forum is to take big topics or unfamiliar topics and ask people, hey, explain this like I'm five, right? Like, break it down. So if we were to explain chat GPT like we were five, or like you had to explain it to a five-year-old, how would you explain it? It is a bot that is writing your, or doing your work for you. When, now, when you say bot? Uh, artificial intelligence. Art, artificial intelligence. It's, it's a chat bot. It's a website. And you log in, and it brings up a chat window, and you have to put in a question or a request. So, okay, that's pretty good. And any anything to, to fill that out? Just you know, it's well, a couple of things. It's it's out of date. Anything that's happened since twenty twenty one is not included in it. Okay. So, like, if you know, you were to ask about, you know. A train derailment in the state of Ohio, it would be like, oh yeah, there was one in 2019. It wouldn't give us the most up to date information um, on that. So it's it's kind of there. It just scrapes the internet. Like it goes and it reads everything on the internet and it compiles it and then uses that information to spit stuff out. Okay, so I was reading the other day. Someone was uh, making a point of just saying, hey. It's kind of like a reference librarian from way back in the day before the internet and everything. If you didn't know something, you'd go to your public library, ask the reference librarian. They would know where to go and find and then bring that information to you. And if they were really good at it, they would kind of regurgitate it to you or kind of show you this is where the info is and this is what it means, not just where to find it. So, so that was a really good point that chat, you made. Chat GPT, bringing back reference librarians. Yeah, why not? You know, encyclopedia is the first Wikipedia. Right, so. <laughs> right. So a chat bot that you can ask it questions, and it basically knows like as much as possible that was on the internet prior to 2021, and it will go ahead and give you that information. But it does something very scary, at least to a lot of educators, and that is you can ask it to write five paragraph persuasive essay about the f- what was more influential to the ancient western world roman culture or greek culture and it will go ahead and you can ask it why was rome more important to the formation of western civilization and it will give you a very compelling and argumentative um piece uh, a persuasive piece rather i should say so what are some of the things that you guys have been seeing or in your experiences that, that 
give people pause and to be concerned about this technology. Well, why do we have to, why are we teaching kids to memorize things if uh, they have a chat bot that they can ask questions to and, and put into relevant uh, terms? I think, I think just like some of the concerns that people have is, is that it does take away some of that, that basic recall knowledge that we've been expected and, and expecting of kids when it comes to like, I, I think back to my time in the classroom as a student and it's like, you know, here is a list of a hundred big words that we're going to cover this semester in your government class. And here is your textbook and then go to the back of the book, write down all these definitions because you're going to need to know it. Right. And that's just simple recall. That's not the actual content that I'm learning or how it applies to anything that I'm doing. There's no authenticity there for that. What I'm simply doing is, is it's just regurgitating. So I think we get worried about some maybe kids using this assignment or asking it to do stuff for us um, when it's going to do some of that more basic level stuff. That stuff that's like not about me, not about my feelings, not about my thoughts, but simply just to like, you know, give me the give me the plot of Romeo and Juliet. You're talking about depth of knowledge and those depth of knowledge mm-hmm. one questions that are like surface level. Just give me the answer to this. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Matt, uh, you're currently in you're 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 enrolled at Western, you're taking classes online. I'm curious about your perspective about all this. Uh I mean, well there's one, there's the whole obvious, I mean, that you kind of brought up is that it just writes papers for you. And I mean, it goes a lot more than just basic five paragraph essays. I mean, it can write whole books for you in seconds, uh, which is really, really startling. Um, and it can do it in, you know, whatever style you want. But what I find concerning, uh, kind of related a bit to the kind of recall of information that you were talking about, Dan, is that it's also a good, a big way that what is referred to this in today's day and age as like disinformation or uh, things that are not facts but are promoted as facts. Uh, that is webbed into the big archive of ChatGPT's uh, database, and so that's the big thing I've seen in different examples. Is that if you, especially if you have really long conversations with ChatGPT, um, it starts to get into saying some really wild and, and crazy things, uh, mm-hmm. you know, some out there things that, that some people do believe. Uh, and then it also just has problems where it just spits out nonsense responses. Right. Um, and and but, I, I think you're hitting it on the head um, with a lot of those different pieces. Like, we're looking at this as something that is obviously biased. Like, we've got to be able to publish to the Internet for this information to get there. So we're missing a portion of the population on this planet that doesn't have perspective or voice in this. So yeah, yeah it is there. And, in, and I also have seen examples where like you ask it a question about say the professional learning community process, right? And it writes you uh, a whole paper about that, that I could then turn into my college professor who's none the wiser that I just asked chat GPT to do this. Right. But then you start to look like it'll, it'll write sources and the sources that it writes don't exist. They're not real. They're just, it's just kind of covering its bases and saying like, yeah, here's this book by you know Dr. DeFore that was published in 2021. And it's like, well, Dr. DeFore passed away. And, yeah. you know, so like his kind spirit of one of those lives, his Dr. DeFore's spirit lives the on. True definition and, of a ghostwriter. You know what? <laughs> That's exactly what it is. That's exactly, you know, maybe he achieved the singularity. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Maybe he is chat GPT. So these are all really good points why it's so why it's so scary, right? Like kids are just gonna be able to ask it questions, get responses, very similar to how they use Google. I'm just gonna go ahead and Google that, right? Um they're gonna be asking it to write papers instead of doing the work themselves. Those papers may be accurate. They may not. They may have a lot of um uh biased information because chat GPT is not even though it's called an artificial intelligence, it's not very intelligent. It's not creating new content. It's basic, I mean, it's creating new content, but it's not looking and evaluating sources. It's just saying, hey, you asked for uh, a paper about psychology. It's just gonna go ahead and scour all sorts of papers published about psychology, recognize patterns of words in those papers, and then regurgitate, create a new pattern of words based on that and say, this looks like a psychology paper. 
but when you read into it, it may be a little off. So here's the thing. We don't have it blocked in our district. And there's one really big reason why. There's, there's several reasons, but there's one really big reason why. Um, blocking it isn't going to change anything. So many of our kids at the secondary level have their own devices, either their own computers or their own Chromebooks, part and thanks to the pandemic. But they also have their phones, too. They can download this app. They can go on their own computer. They could go, if say we block it, they can go on their phone. And they can go ahead, log into ChatGPT, ask it to do their homework for them, boom, boom, boom. And then they just copy, paste that into a Google Doc, ta-da, turn it in. So blocking it is not going to change, is not going to stop kids from using it. So I'm really curious, what are some ways to embrace this technology? Because it's not going away. That We're only going to see more AIs. There are AIs right now that, that can create art in the styles of famous artists. There are AIs that can write music. There are AIs, this, this AI can even write code. So what is one way to look at this is how can I capitalize this on this and use this as a tool, either for myself as a teacher or for instruction with my students? Who wants to tackle that one first? Well, I think that offering kids uh, the opportunity to use it and actually see it and act and go back through and validate some of the information that's in there might be a very good use, you know, uh, use of the tool. Um, going back and um, having the students put in, you know, their own personal feelings or reactions or reflections like Dan was talking about. I think that that is uh, that's a huge huge thing. Like I agree with this or I disagree with this, um, but yeah, I just I feel like uh, educators are going to have to embrace it and uh, use it as a teaching tool instead of trying to just block it. I like that idea that you had there. Like you you can as as the teacher ask Chat GPT to produce something that your students normally would produce, and then give it to your students. And then say, okay, um, f for today's work or, you know, over the course of this next week, we're going to try and find all the ways in which this response is incorrect. Why? And that would be a much deeper application going back to what you were saying earlier, Dan, of, of, uh, of the knowledge of, of teaching. I, I really like that idea. But then you were saying um, uh, the uh, um, putting more of the, your own thoughts. So structuring your own, structuring new assignments that have to be written in a way in which students' own experiences are uh, woven into it. Correct. Opinions. Right. And things that, things that chat GPT can't, can't. can't give you. I mean, yeah, authenticity, um, looking at ways that we can incorporate those pieces as well is, is so important and, and just kind of you know, thinking about other ways that we can use this for our advantage. Like, we can ask, like, you know, can you generate me a quick level one DOK quiz so that I can pop my kids the next morning? Like, you know, just kind of go in and, and give them that pop quiz, and G Chat GPT can write that for me. Pop or, right on the nose with it. <clears throat> or you could do something like, you know, take an article that you want to read in the class, but you know you've got a group of kids that are at very differently, different levels, and you can ask Chat GPT to... Can you make this more approachable for a kid with this lexile level or this reading ability? Mm -hmm. Right, you can simplify that and, and get that. Now, obviously, access to grade level content is essential to growth, and I need to put that out there. But on the flip side, like we need to like maybe address some gaps here, or is there a way that we can do this and use this to to kind of help us reach these kids? You know, it's a lot of different pieces that can go into it. A lot of different pieces that have such an important role, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Like leverage it as the teacher. I, I like what you were saying about um, asking it to do some of the front loading work mm -hmm. that would take you time to do. Go ahead, write the quiz for me. Boom. Yep. Now I can go through and and edit it. Make sure. Yep. yep. Is this all correct? Yep, yep. 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 Boom. You don't have to spend your time creating those those quizzes. You just spend time vetting it. Make mm -hmm. sure they're good, and then delivering them to your students. You can. 
I've been playing around with this before. I've asked for it to write me IEP goals. I've yep. asked for it to write uh, differentiated lesson plans for teaching kids how to multiply two-digit numbers by two-digit numbers. And it goes and does the long form like we all had to do back in college, write a perfect lesson plan with the anticipatory set and the lesson and the differentiation and extension. It was like, oh, wow. And a lot. Some of it was good. Some of it wasn't. That's okay. You know, as a teacher, I can evaluate that. But I like that. I like that piece, leveraging it. Yeah, and, I, and such an important piece of it. And I had an opportunity to talk with one of the professors in a college of education on the East Coast that is kind of on the cutting edge of this. And, and her big thing was, like, we need to embrace it. We need to look at it in ways that, like, it's not going away. There are going to be more. And it's so important that we have an understanding that it's, A, not the end of the world. Like, we've dealt with this before. Every time you go to a website and a little pop up pops up and asks, like, do you have a question? That's the same technology. It's, yep. You know, you call in and they're like, how can I help you? And it's a robot voice. That's the same technology. It's just listening to your questions and then directing your call to the right spot. Like, I always mash zero. I want yeah, to talk yeah. to an operator. Obviously, obviously you want to talk to a human, so maybe that's not the best example because, like, every time I talk to it, it's like, I didn't catch that. I didn't understand that. And I was like, oh, well, that's really difficult. But, like, we're, we kind of have that opportunity to, to do so much right now and to look at this and just kind of know some of the pitfalls, but also know some of the advantages to this kind of technology. Like, you know, we look at other interventions throughout history and it's disrupted things and it's changed the way we've done things. But yeah. like, you know, like we don't send kids to school with an abacus anymore. Well, I, mean, I mean, heck, we don't even send kids to school with calculators anymore. I <laughs> like except it's on their phone. Yeah, that's it's on their true. phone. It's that's on their true. device. It, it, so like we've made that adjustment, but we still teach math. Yeah. Because kids still need to do that, and we just teach math in a way that they can't just plug that into the calculator. Now, I, there is an AI tool for that. Yeah, there is. <laughs> so 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 bring us home on this, Matt, since you are the one that is most closest furthest removed from uh, a high school experience and I'm putting you on the spot here um because you were just in high school just a few years ago um put yourself back in those shoes how would you have loved to have seen your teachers use this tool uh when you were in class well one I I like I like the idea of like pop quizzes and stuff like that um because yeah, a big thing of it that we that you can see with Chad GPT that's been like brought up is that, and I saw it a lot when I was in grade school and stuff, is that teachers, they give one test to every single person throughout the whole day, you know, the first hour, second hour, third hour. Right. So by the time you get to fourth hour, if you, it's not something I did, but if you knew the right person, you could find out what was on that quiz for first hour. Fair or, enough. you know, you find a <laughs> sophomore who has the test from last year, because that's another thing teachers have say they have... I've seen teachers teach the same test for 10 years in a row. Tanya, that never happened in your classroom, did it? Uh, and, and, you know, so a big, a, a big thing is it can add a lot of, like, I guess, uh, fancy way, spice or variety into the classroom, you know, yeah. if, especially if you're kind of a more seasoned teacher who's been doing, you've been teaching the same lessons for, for 20 plus years. Um, but just in general, kind of an, an analogy that I, I was thinking of while I'm here is, I kind of look at ChatGPT as like a, a, a Wikipedia or Google, you know, it's, it's this website that has a lot to offer, but it is not perfect, okay? So we've mentioned, you know, a lot of the data information's wrong sometimes, or it doesn't answer you the right way and this and that. And so that's why it should be promoted to the kids to use. But like Tanya brought up earlier, or Dan, I'm sorry, I can't remember, but you know, have them go look through the sources. Like, that's how Wikipedia was taught to me when I was in high school. You know, you couldn't mm -hmm. directly mm -hmm. quote Wikipedia, right. but we were told it's a great place to get sources. It's, you a, good, know? it's a good starting point. Yes, yes. or in, yep. additionally, um, a big thing I saw for it was using ChatGPT to write a first draft or, or to get that ball rolling with papers, you know. And, and then you can get to what Tanya was saying, where you add your own emotions, opinions, and feelings into it. Yeah. So I think it's a big door opener to students and teachers at both levels. Kids have access to more tools, but I think the teachers do. And kind of like Dan said, I think the only way really forward is to embrace it, really. And, 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 and we'll end on that note. And I know that 
uh, that's a really big note, though, um, because it's that's it, it is it's extremely challenging. It's extremely daunting. The idea that that this is this is Google was a big change. Wikipedia was a big change, but this feels like a a different order of magnitude, and um and so that's really daunting. Um, but that is why we are here. You know, this is why the technology team is here to support you. So we definitely encourage you to to experiment with it, play around with it. Um, and if you'd like support, we are all here to to help. Dan, Tanya, myself, even even Matt, um, to to come in. I mean, he's not just a break fix guy and gonna mm-hmm. you know fix the audio and everything, but he's he he's he's been in these classrooms literally. So. Um, and he's in classrooms right now at college, and this is affecting uh, uh, the reality there. So please reach out to us um, uh, so we can find ways to maybe not embrace it, maybe like a side hug, you know, <laughs> something like that maybe um, to start with. Um, but talk to your kids about it. If you are in education and you have students sitting in your classroom and you guys, you know, are kind of at a at a loss of what to what to talk about, start a conversation about it and make sure that they understand that they're not getting away with something. Because I think that that's yep. part of the draw. Yep. So I think it's a good conversation, and I think it's a worthwhile conversation to definitely have with your students and uh, the, the idea to bring into the classroom and, and use it as a tool is essential. I like it. Always, always good dialogue with your students. That, that is going to pay off uh, in the end. All right. We're going to get out of your ear. Next time, we'll... Uh, Next time. Sure. Next time, we're going to have ChatGPT write our podcast for us. There we go. Know. We'll do that. <laughs> Next time, Next time we'll put out uh, questions. We want to talk just and address ChatGPT in this one. But next time, uh, we'll put it out there and ask for uh, questions so we can respond to those. Until then, uh, I hope everyone has a great day. Goodbye. Bye-bye. And that's a wrap of today's episode of Podcast Name. We hope you enjoy listening and gain some valuable insights from our discussion. Before we go, we'd like to remind you to subscribe to our podcast on your favorite platform so you never miss an episode. Thanks, ChatGBT.